Okay, I'm not really sure what else I can do when we're taking the cat home because I'm pretty sure I've gone through every option I possibly could. So let's try not taking it home. Certainly as cute as a cat is, you never take this thing home with you. Just can't take it home with you. Responsible adult. You are. With rent and bills to pay for, not to mention you need to buy food to survive too. No way you could care for a cat long term, right? Merely for this little outing on your day off. What to do? Ooh, here we go. Okay, um... Don't know what it is with the question marks there. Uh, we can feed the cat again. Cat must be hungry, right? Can't imagine that it had much to eat if it's so attached to this that box it's in. Though it doesn't exactly seem malnourished either. So we must have left the box to search for food then. For reasons, something in the back of your mind tells you that's not the case. And not to think on it any further. Well, either way, you can't exactly enjoy a day out knowing you left behind a hungry cat. Especially when you could have done something to help. So, what to do about the hungry kitty? Uh, let's check the pockets. Dig into your pockets. Oh, I still got the uh, string of yarn. What well, a small piece of string you left in your pocket. Not very helpful. String is too far short. Are you going to excite? No. I see. Yeah, it's a memory of... Yeah. Your right pocket? It's about chocolate! Oh no, um, it's pretty toxic to cats. My chocolate bar? Is it? Nope, it's not even expired. Quite, the uh, fine indeed. About to offer it to the cat. When suddenly you're here with Gilda's ring, you remember something gut curling. Chocolate is toxic to cats. Oh my gosh, I'm so. Just the urge to vomit as you, at your near mistake. Oh, so guilty. You throw the chocolate bar away into a nearby trash bin. Oh, come on, that could have been for us. An almost cat killer doesn't deserve chocolate. I mean, after all the shit we've been through, this little shit. <laughs> I mean, kind of deserves its own medicine, although I'm sure it would find a way to kill me in turn. <laughs> Go back to the cat, barely able to stand his innocently oblivious expression. Doesn't even know that you almost... I'm sorry. Don't even know what to say. You're a horrible person. You know what? Stay there. I'll be right back. You leave the alley. Turn with the whole fish you brought at a nearby grocery store. It was a bit pricey, but it was the least you could do. That cat eagerly accepts your offering, munching happily at the fish that you after you placed it in the box. I want to smell at the sight, but you feel so awful. Sorry again. Cat seemingly pays you no mind as you slip back out the alley. Not feeling like you deserve a peaceful day out, you decide to just head back home. Oh great, it's hollow me. On the way home, you notice more cats than usual, watching you from their hiding spots. Uh-oh. It's more than just a black kitty. But you try not to think about it. Can't help but wonder. They know what you nearly done. But... Not like you meant to hurt anyone. Right. Finally reach your apartment building. You're about to unlock the door when... Oh no. You look behind you. Only you see dozens of cats standing there. Looking at you. They you see you feeding the cat in the alley and thought that you had more food for all of them? Uh, I'm sorry. I don't have any more food for you. Another move an inch. It's starting to feel a little unnerved when... Finally, a single cat pushes its way to the front end. Oh, it's you. 
Oh, it's... How carefully he between his teeth is the chocolate bar he'd thrown away earlier. Place the chocolate bar down in front of it before looking back up at you. All the cats look up at you. You can feel the judgment. Feel your sins weighing down heavily on your back. But without the money to buy enough food for all of them, you don't know what to do. You beg for forgiveness. Class your knees and bow down low as you start to earnestly beg for the forgiveness. Sorry, I swear. I, I never do anything to make it up to all of you, but, but you're out of options. Suddenly... Feel something is stirring your stomach and swimming its way up, up to your throat. Closing off your airway as it tries to force its way out of your esophagus. You finally, finally succeeds with aid from your helpless gagging. Ugh. What the? On the ground in front of you? It's the fish. The flopping fish. You just threw up at a living fish? The hell? Cats come rushing forward or tearing hungrily at the fish. You're happy to finally be of help, truly. But how? Ugh. Can I keep on throwing up all these? Ugh. Throw up another fish. And another. And another. And your stomach hurts. Getting dizzy. Fourteen knees. Tears of snow are streaming down your face by the time you cough up. Final tiny bloody fish and collapse forward. Your throat and stomach both burn in a way that feels dangerous. You start to fade out. Despite the pain, strangely feel a more overwhelming sense of hopeful pride. And made up for your disgusting actions that you've been forgiven. <coughs> Sound of happy cats munching away at their fish fills your ears. Then, feel something being nudged into your hand. Feels like it's a bar of chocolate you found in your pocket. <laughs> Smile weakly. You see, it's necessarily a tone, but you don't really have the strength to eat your reward. Certainly, the last taste in your mouth is as you leave this monocle doesn't get to be that of chocolate, but raw fish. Well, that was kind of a bleak ending. Yeah, yeah this one. Silly you, chocolate is bad for cats. But you knew that, didn't you? Yeah. Huh, interesting. Okay, so I'm, I was just going to go back through this and try to get the other option. I'm going back inside, but it's um, slightly different. Huh, interesting. Okay, now to go inside this time, see what happens. Decide to cut your losses on hen's side. Hen's way down on you, but you're only human. What more can you do? He's trying to ignore the yelling of the neighborhood cats as you go about your chores. Instead of preparing dinner, how could you enjoy it knowing how hungry those poor cats inside are? Once you've wronged. Decide to take a bath and go straight to bed without dinner. Fitting punishment for someone like you. Go to the fancy bath bubbles because you don't desert them and sink into the water with a sigh. My racist, but you can't really think of any immediate solution that doesn't require more money. Wish there was something, anything you could do to make things right. Suddenly, legs start to feel itchy. Oh no, are we going to get more fur growing out of us again? Try to lift up to see what's going on, but what rises out of the water is a pair of legs. The fuck? Wait, am I turning into a giant fish? It's, it's a fish tail. 
You feel dizzy at the sight. Maybe you're hallucinating from the stress. Try to climb out of that tub to cool your head, but instead of your hand rising up to brace itself, the white fin stretch it out to plop it, plop on the rim. Tweak to hold your weight, and you and you're so startled by the sight. They slip and smack your head on the side of the bathtub, passing out almost immediately. You're awake, you think anyway. You open your eyes and you're underwater. Mr. Slip beneath the surf of the bathway, gasp instinctively. Except, not really. Bubble simply floats out of your mouth, up, up, up to the surface. Broke as heck, so you know your bar top isn't that big. Did, did you shrink? But how? But even if there was a reasonable answer, it wouldn't explain how you haven't drowned yet. Saw to the edge of the tub and see the truth in your shadow silhouette. You've been turned into a fish. This, this is impossible. Don't get any time to ponder over this, unfortunately, because just then... Uh, yep, here we go. We're gonna get eaten alive! A shell looms over you from above. Look up and see the cat. Peers down at you from beyond the water's surface. And then... Then you realise. This is the answer. This is how you're meant to atone. With a heavy heart, you swim up to the surface. Cat scoots you up, tossing you out of the bathtub and onto the bathroom tiles. As you flop around gasping for air, or water, you realize the cat wasn't alone. Those little hungry eyes peer down at you. You can hear the yelling of what sounds like hundreds of cats outside your bathroom window. Send one last look at the cat before closing your eyes and accepting your fate. Cats descend upon you, tearing at your flesh. You find yourself mourning the fact that you're not even big enough to feed all of them. Even in the end, you couldn't properly atone. Your efforts, your life, all of it, amounted to nothing. 25 seafood sacrifice yeah yeah this, this one kindly feed some poor hungry cats a fish how nice of you will this main menu always just glitchy I oh, know Okay, let's try looking around the area this time instead of checking our pockets. Pass around the dark, dingy alleyway. I know you see garbage cans, or garbage bags, trash bins, uh, empty cardboard boxes, and scattered litter here and there. There was something for the cat to eat, surely it would have found it by now, right? But you don't want to just get out so easily. You keep looking, and look, and only see garbage. And sniff, only gar and only smell garbage. You listen. Hmm. You just barely make out the sound of a faint scurrying by a trash bin a few feet away. Quietly, oh so quietly, you creep over to the bin. And... You launch. You weren't very graceful in your attempt. Dumb and knocked over a stack of nearby boxes full of more trash. As you stand up, grasping your hand. Oh, he's a small mouse. Look at him, he's so cute. Sorry, buddy, but you need be lunch. <laughs> Already sacrificed myself, no, I don't need. So, might as well sacrifice someone else in turn. <laughs> Those squeaks and shrieks and stress, wriggling and struggling desperately in your grip. I want it too tightly and carefully for it, carefully for it to be able to bite and scratch you, though. Wears itself out eventually and looks up you with big black eyes. Completely at your mercy. Ooh, okay. I will feed it for now. 
sorry, Lou, dude, but we have to. <laughs> that looks scared. Let's see if we can sense your intentions. Basically, it starts to struggle again. Mouse is reluctant. Ugh. You're already making me feel bad. Just <laughs> feed it. <laughs> feed the mouse to the cat. Cat tears apart instantly. Ugh. Ugh, man. Mouse is pain squeaks and squeals pierce through you until they're absolutely abruptly cut off. So that's why the cat mules happily to you, red tinting it, its fangs. Cat curls up in a now bloodstained box and goes to sleep. Take the chance to leave. Well, the cat will likely follow you home after all. And cute as that cat is, you really can't afford a pet right now. Still feeling a little guilty about the mouse, you decide to just go home. It's pretty quiet. Okay, am I gonna get followed by rats this time? Or oh, mouses? Okay, it was pretty uneventful, which I don't like. After a long walk home, you finally enter your apartment. Head straight to your room. You collapse on your bed, falling into a fitful sleep. Later, you wake up. Eh, uh, son of a bitch. If it isn't the fucking cat, it's something else. <laughs> Just squeaking and scurrying noises all around you. So loud and constant, they sound like screams. Darkness of your room. You see the shifting shadows of hundreds of mice surrounding your bed. Try to run. Eh. Uh. But you cry out as a twin, as twin la la uh, lances of pain race up your legs. Fall off the bed to your attempt to escape. Holds of mice dart in you as you crash to the ground. You can't stand up. Looking back and squint in the dark. You just about make out the source of your pain. Flesh and tendons on your heels and ankles are mangled. Been through your socks. No, leave me alone. Despite your crawl with only your arms towards the door. Mice descend, descend upon you. Bite into your skin. Rowing away pieces of you. It's hard to fade in and out of consciousness. But you still reach for the doorknob. Your arms heavy, weighed down by the mice clinging to you with little claws and tiny teeth. Manage to jostle the doorknob enough for the door to slowly swing open. But the outstretched arm suddenly falls to the ground, lifeless. Mice manage to chew through the flesh and bone of your now dismembered limb. As a few mice creep towards you, curiously, curiously inspect your arm, stare blankly at it for a moment before sliding up, flying your gaze up. In this newly opened doorway sits a familiar looking mouse, stares at you. Youngness has barely his beady black eyes. Doctors, oh yeah, you can, can't begin to measure the depths. Hi. All the hatred pouring out from within them. All of it. Aimed at you. Yeah. Claps head hitting on the floor as you... Other arm is in the way as well. I'm not sure how you're still conscious, the pain should be indescribable, and yet you feel, just, just feel like a cold sense of loss. I just have clustered along your back now, gnawing and ripping their way between your shoulder blades, into your back, into your chest. Weakly cough up blood. 
must have damaged something important. There was something being pulled out of you. In between the moments that blankets of darkness fade out of your, your vision, you hear something wet plop on the ground in front of, in front of you. Prime your eyes open to see it in front of the mouse. Oh, my heart! When the shed red your blood and pulsing and Oh that's that's your heart, isn't it? How the mice all descend upon it, banning your half in body. You're losing a lot of blood. You feel sleepy, but also feel anger. Yes. So so much anger. How dare they? How dare they? Nothing you see before your vision fails you. Pale glowing eyes leering from the darkness beyond the doorway. You can hear squeaks and shrieks of terror all around you. Blue yowls, deep snarls, gnashing teeth, tearing flesh. Remains, remaining senses leave you. Smell weakly at the last of your strength. Something with so slightly damp and sticky fur nozzles your cheek. Oh, demeanor. That. Yeah. Well, thanks, cat. Good kitty. Well fed. And yeah, that was kind of a fucked up ending. Yeah, cats are supposed to eat mice. Huh. Wonder what mice are supposed to eat. Okay, let's try sparing the mouse, mouse this time. Are you sure? Okay, spare it. You're gonna kill me now, aren't you? Hear the cat's stomach growling. Must be so hungry. Must be starving. Sorry, but the uh, mouse kind of uh, went ro rogue and tried to kill me, so. No, the cat is hungry. Why are you hesitating? You can't pray for the cat's sake, didn't you? Are you really going to value the life of a filthy rodent more than the cat's? Yeah, I am, but... Uh, it's going to probably end my life again. Yep. <laughs> uh, for fuck's sake. Can't ever please this cat at all. What's brought... done has brought me trouble. You're mocking me, aren't you? Last chance. Hand over the prey now. You let the mouse go. Scurries away, squeezing into a tiny hole in the wall. Though you don't need it much, mind. We have more pressing matters like that. Don't flinch as the giant quad paw slowly falls in front of you. Blocking your path in the alley's entrance. Not that you had any delusions about escaping. Cat is hungry after all. Close your eyes in acceptance as the paw gently pulls you back. And back. And... Munch. Well, I spared. Well, mine definitely fucking wasn't spared at all. Yeah, you decide not to be the poor hungry cat as hopeless mouth, meanie. Oh, um, okay, so the question marks have now been replaced with the blood. Interesting. Cat lets out a sad, plain little sound. It's hungry. Must be starving, so you look around and see a nearby shard of glass. Body moves as if it knows what to do, what needs to be done. Take the shard and. What? Why would you. Why would you do that?
Carefully hold your finger over the cat. Dark red blood beads at the wound. Paw growing heavy enough to drip into the cat's open, waiting jaws. Mules happily at you. Smell warmly and lower your hand into the box. Drink in the cat's cheek before landing it lap gently at your bleeding finger. When the flow gets weak and the cat meows for more, squeeze below the wound, coaxing more blood out. You a strange but welcome sense of comfort from the odd exchange. A being other than yourself was hungry, and you were able to provide it sustenance. Small wrong in the world made right. Even if so strangely done and only temporary. Uh, temp yeah, that word. Ironically, it's at that moment that you start to feel dizzy. I didn't think you were losing that much blood. Slam against the cat's box and listen to a mule in distress. I think it sounds worried about you. Or at least you'd like to think so. Could just want more blood as well. As well. Cat hops out of the box and into your lap, nuzzling out your stomach and mewing happily. You wish you could ease its concerns, but it's not like you can just talk to each other. And it's not like... Like, for the cat to uh, suddenly care about me after all this shit has put me through. <laughs> Can't help but try to remember the last time you talked to anyone, actually. You were to die here, and now in this alley. How long would it take for someone to realise you were missing? That you were gone? <coughs> Thoughts are interrupted when the cat yells loudly, turns it up in your lap. No time to wonder why, as a voice rings out from the entry way to the alley. Hello? Hey, you. Are you alright? Don't answer. Don't think you can. Voice feels locked away, deep, deep within you. Cat looks up at you with a long stare, as if assessing you. Looks back towards the voice with a final nuzzle to your stomach. Oh no. Officer out of your lap, walking towards the alley's entrance, but then starts to shift. Crack. Oh no, <laughs> gonna kill our potential only human friend. Face opens up. Kills back. It opens again. I think Tentra is peeking out from where you think his mouth should be. Strange silhouette freezes in the light beyond the alley. But what the hell is. But they don't have the chance to finish their question. Tentra's coverage into one. For shooting out the cat's jaws. Piercing it into the stranger's shoulder. Our pain cry, fearful yell. Claw at the tendrils, trying to pull them loose, but to no avail. You can't seem to process their screams. Set at the creature before you, a different from the cat who mewed out of concern for you earlier. Oh, okay, we get to. Hmm. Let's let the cat feed for now. Someone help me help. You look away as the creature devours the stranger. Drain them until there's nothing but a husk of bone, skin, and clothes heaped on the floor. You feel awful, but what could you do? Creature is a living thing. Shouldn't it be allowed to eat what it needs to? Does it not also have a right to do what it must to survive? Nor the voice in the back of your head that questioned if there could have been another way. Not like you tried to see if it could eat anything other, anything other than blood. Human blood. Now did you? Creature purrs as it rubs in its side into your arm. Realize that after a bit of rest you've already started feeling better. But you also think that something inside you it was a little too broken to. Just not quite sure what it is yet. 
Stand and hold your out your arms. Still hungry? Croatia trolls happily and hopes hops into your outstretched arms. Let's go then, yeah? Aww, oh, god, that's gonna be fucked. Be in the alley together. Go into the world together. Cat is hungry. They'll be hungry often from now on. Very often. Screams of fear and terror follow you both way, wherever you go. Without thought or care or concern for any of it, just stand back and watch. We can eat blood fee. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was. Okay, well, at least I kind of lived and we got to take over the world, so yay. Maybe. Hey, there it is. Ending 29. Get the can, endless supply of food. Generous. Okay, now it's time to stop the cat, which will lead to me dying. Can't let this happen. Shakily crawl forward. Weakly grab out the conjoined tendrils that pulse as they drain the stranger's blood. You tug it as firmly as you're able, the tendrils pulsing hoarse, and the cat turns to you. It makes a strange trilling noise that sounds like a question, but you have no answer. Can't even understand the question. They simply scoop up the creature, the cat, cradling it in your arms. Gaze almost longingly at the light beyond the alley's entrance. You don't know what's going on, but you can't just sit by and watch someone else get be in so viciously. No one they tried to see if you were okay. No one you could offer yourself instead. I think the stranger is set free, because after the sound of shoes hastily scuffling, the pavement fades into the distance. Feel something sharp pierce your back. Feels thin, almost like a needle. The pain passes quickly as your body adjusts to the intrusion. Sure, it was, wasn't so thin when it skewered through the stranger's shoulder earlier. As you feel your blood leave your body slowly as they've been pumped out, it gets hard to think and your vision starts to fail you. The creature in your arms makes a soft sound. Hold it as tightly and closely as you eat. The weak arms can manage. This is fine. Okay with this. Don't know if this will change anything. Surely the cat will get hungry again at some point after you're gone and no longer an option. But at least this time you were able to save someone. Personal care package. <laughs> okay. Well, we're well over halfway now. Yeah, you share a nice meal with the cat. Bit high and iron though. Yeah, still got. Uh, what's it? Yeah, 18 more endings to find. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. Okay, let's try playing with the cat this time. Oh, are you in a little tension, don't you? Poor thing must be bored sitting in that box all day. You're not sure you're much of an interesting companion, but you're willing to do your best. There's got to be something you can entertain a little critter with. But what? Oh great, we gotta check our pockets and find the string again, maybe. Dig in your pockets. Yep, here's the string. Not very helpful. The string is far too short. Dig it. Yep, I had a feel it was going to... Yeah, yeah. I did that last time when we found it. In your right pocket. It's bar of chocolate. Sorry. Not too helpful either right now. The only other thing you got on you is your phone. Not much of anything that a cat can play with, but... There is something you can do. Oh, I get to take a little picture of her. No, that's cute. 
can you download one of those apps like has like fish moving and stuff and the cat can like play with it or <laughs> whatever but photo montage well that was fun right well you enjoyed yourself nothing else to do and no intention of taking the cat home you decide it's probably best to just leave don't want the cat to get too attached after all at least you'll have some memories to take with you okay yeah uh, i'm gonna see you around i guess good luck Okay, turn walk away, but oh uh, no, the phone gonna kill us now. Hmm, phone just got a message. You open it up and what? An I cute picture of a familiar-looking cat. Huh? Cat does look cute and happy in the picture, but it's not a picture you recognize. The heck? Did I... You didn't take this picture. Peek over your shoulder at the cat. The cat is simply looking at you. Mew sadly as a plane for you to come back. Let's get out of the alleyway. You only can briskly walk out of the alley without another look. Whew, that was weird. A good distance away it went. <coughs> Not again. Reluctantly look at the new message and turn ignore me. Creeped out you decide to just go home. <coughs> I know you're seeing these. <coughs> Come back. <coughs> Come back. Come back. Come back. Oh, I definitely did not like that picture. Must be of the uh, smiling dog thing. Come back. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Nice try with that jump scare, but I'm pretty used to it by now. Can see you. Can always see you. You can't hide. I'll always find you. Okay, well, I lost this creepiness when you did the OO face. I start around nervously, soon that you're being followed. But there's nothing there. Finally home, but you feel too shaky for any relief to come calm you down. Rush to the bathroom and slam the door behind you. Everything's okay. This isn't real. Just like a bad dream. Everything's okay. Come in the dark to turn on the sink and splash your face with some cold water. Hope it will calm your mind and stop the hallucinations. Because that's what they are, right? Hallucinations. Really great in leaving home today. Must have been overworking yourself more than you realised. Yeah, that must be it. You message. You jump out your phone and alerts you to yet another message received. Ooh. Okay, let's check the phone. Shaking hands, you look at the phone. Hi, friend. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> Ow, what the fuck? What? So you will run and signal you jump back. You slip. Smashing the back of your head into the bathroom mirror. Don't really show the, pa the pain just yet. Your eyes shifting wildly around the room. There's nothing there. Nothing at all. But, but there is in the mirror, I was just about to say. <laughs> you feel dizzy. Dizzily feel the back of your head examining your hand. Can't really see anything. 
but it feels warm and wet. The smell of copper fills the air. Dizziness overwhelms you and you collapse on the bathroom tiles. Help. We tell your phone to call an ambulance. Batteries are dead. Photobomber. Well, that was a fucking creepy one, that's for sure. Yes, I think 30. Really nailed the good side in this one. <laughs> okay, let's try ignoring the phone this time. Phone vibrates instantly over and over. But you just can't look. Keep your eyes squinted shut, your fingers tightly gripping the sink. In your mind, you beg whoever, whatever is doing this, to just stop already. Please, 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 just put me out of my misery. Not this quietly. You don't really mean it. You don't. Those words take shape in the darkest corners of your mind. The phone immediately stops vibrating. You think that this would give you relief, but you only feel the dread sinking heavily into your stomach. You can feel your eyes. You can feel eyes on you. You can feel pus of air on the back of your neck. Ugh. Ugh. Don't, no, mm, don't stop. Mm, I don't like the noises. Feel pus of air on the back of your neck, damp and deep and slow. Take a deep breath and open your eyes. You look at the mirror. Nothing. Peek around the room. Still nothing. Nothing at all. But you know, you know that something is there. Waiting to be acknowledged. For you to accept the fact of its existence. Only then would I deign to give you peace. To free you from a life of constantly looking over your shoulder. Or fearing your own image. Your own reflection. You feel its patience, limitless and old. Count one against it in the war of at, at whatever that word is. Life Spain will long expire before it tires you. So you close your eyes. Accept it. Ow. If your head is severed from your neck, you filled with peace. Grateful that, at the very least, never had to see it, wherever it was. <laughs> Headshot, really. <laughs> very on the nose, but um, we at least got that ending. Yeah, 31, yeah. Okay, we all get a little camera shy sometimes, <laughs> but not enough to get our head lobbed off. Oh no, it's happening again. I tried to load and it's doing this shit again. Can you not? I'm trying to get the endings. I did that middle one this time instead of the others. In the days leading up to meeting with it, I've been assess obsessed with a memory. Someone precious to me. I found someone precious to them. My best friend. My only friend. I was happy for them, truly. But then I'd be happy for others too. They promised it wouldn't happen to me again. That they knew how it felt to be told by someone you cared for. That they'd outgrown you and your friendship. That they'd never ever do such a thing to me. Not a moment that passes now that I wish I'd risk the pain of their rejection. Just believed them. But I didn't. Pulled away before they could, could try to protect my fragile heart. But it only hurt all the more. Selfish as it was, I wanted them to fight harder to keep me around. When it appeared before me, I promised to be just that. A friend that would never, ever let me go. A friend that would never, ever leave me. All I had to do 
Which promise the same thing in return. And ouch. <laughs> Gotta fucking know the feeling of that one, but Jesus Christ, stop with the deep emotional shit. We're here to be get scared by a freaking cat, not doing emotional baggage, but um okay, I stopped on here for whatever reason. Was it good today? That good thing. Maybe good luck too. Yes, lucky. 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 Also very lucky. Or maybe it was fate? Oh, that's fucking creepy. I like how it slightly changed. Okay, well, um, skip all through this. Okay, well, we still got a few more things to do with the do not take cat home, so. Okay, so we checked the pockets while playing with the thing, but, uh, let's look around the area. Search around, but there's really nothing in the alley that looks interesting enough for the cat to play with. So maybe... How about a game? You said a game you've known since childhood. Red light, green light. A classic. You think how to play might be a bit challenging, but you get the feeling that villains' natural hunting instincts will help her along the way. And also kill me. You walk to the entrance of the alley and the cat is meowing at you. Don't worry, I'm not leaving you. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I direct your movements, covering your eyes with your hands, and turn around. One, two, three. Red light. Spin around. Cat hasn't left the box, tilting its head at you in curious co confusion. Yeah, let's keep playing. What could possibly go wrong? Try again. This time you go a bit slower. One, two, three. Red light. And you turn around this time. Cat is out of the box. Cat freezes under your stairs. If it thinks you can't see it, if it doesn't move. So cute. Yeah, I won't be saying that when I, my face gets, gets clawed off, but anyway. Satisfied that the cat is getting the hang of the game, you turn around and spin back up. One, two, three, red light. Turn around. Oh, look at him peeking out around the box. Cat is now a few steps away from the box now, peeking out from behind a dumpster. Its eyes trained rather intensely on you. Well, at least it's having fun. Turn again. Feel a sudden chill run down your spine. You feel silly. You can't help counting just a little faster this time. One, two, three, red light. Well, they around after the same red light. You look at the cat. It's halfway down the alley, closer to you now, but... It says if the perspective of what you're seeing is off somehow. Doesn't the cat look a little... bigger? Pupils are thin slits now. Something... something's not right. Cat meows at you again, but sounds much deeper than earlier. Crash down as it poised to lunge forward. Breathe shudders a little as your heart starts to race. Foot instinctively shifts back. Oh, hey! Don't like your eyes, or your smile, or just you in general. <laughs> Freeze immediately. Cat looks patient. It wants to keep playing, but you go up and turn around. Swiftly counting and turn again as you gasp out. One, two, three, red light. 
Brown shakes as she will back around. You find yourself staring at a long surface of black fur. Slowly look up. And up. And up. See a giant... Oh, I don't like it when it... When it does animations like that, it's so creepy. <laughs> See a giant shadowy figure leering down from its position, hunched over you. Fangs dripping with saliva. Claws crushing into the concrete walls of the alley. Glowing eyes aren't blinking as they look back at you. Cat waiting for your turn next. But so close. You turn around now. You don't want to play anymore. Yeah, let's just run for it. Yeah, and it gets us munched on. <laughs> Don't even finish turning around before claws grip your torso, digging in and piercing the soft flesh of your stomach with ease. As you're lifted into the drooling, gaping jaws above you, you can't help but think that there must have been another way out of this. But pointless regrets are pretty typical of you, aren't they? Fear quitter. Ugh. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the feeling that there's definitely a hidden meaning behind all this, but yeah, this one. When the going gets tough, just give up. That's how the song, saying goes, right? Okay, let's try backing up this time. Keeping your eyes trained on the giant looming over you, take a step back. No, that's cheating. Ah. Uh... Excuse me? Uh, what's this restore backup thing? Begin re restoration. Wait, what? Um, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. What oh, is it? B A C um, Wait, there we go. Back. Oh, yeah. You. And then Pete, there we go, back up. What are you doing? Stop. You'll break everything. Back up. Cast stairs as you keep eye contact and back up. Step back and back. And as you take one more step back out of the alley. Go home. Error. Error. Huh. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I was not expecting it to go this route. Well, that's how the alley seems to be broken. What exactly did you do? Error found. Ending 33. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, we can... Yeah. Ex exception has occurred. Please refrain from going outside of the per permitted parameters. Huh. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Okay, well, um, let's try buying a toy this time. Being out of this alley all alone for knows, well, who knows how long. Personally, think your fairy friend deserves something special. I'll be right back, okay? Quickly leave the alley and rush to the nearby pet store. Browse through all the different toys for cats. There's so many to choose from, plush and bright colored and scented with catnip. But... Realize that most of the toys aren't meant for a cat to play with alone. Can't stay in the alley playing forever. You can't exactly afford to get another cat as a playmate. I mean another cat. Another? That's it. Know exactly what to get now. Do a quick and successful search of the store. Make your purchase and rush back to the alley. Eager to show off your find. Back. Alley feels even gloomy after spending time in direct sunlight. Makes you feel that much proud of your gift. 
Skip over the can and dig it in the store's plastic bag. I've got something for you. Cat leans up and curious at the bag's contents. Pull out your gift to the cat. Ta-da! Small cat plushie. Plushie is light orange cream colour with burnt sepia stripes. Making it resemble a tabby cat. The synthetic fur is soft, but not unrealistically so. The large eyes have pale green more subdued than you would have expected for a toy. Still don't deny it, it's just a plushie, but the thoughtful details still make it almost uncanny to the real thing. Which makes it perfect. Penny for the cat, one you could actually afford. Win-win. That's not all. Give the plushie a little squeeze and... <laughs> yeah, that's a cute imitation, but... Cat looks unimpressed. Hmm. Well, you think it's cute. Guess your purchase wasn't so successful after all. Out of options and low on cash, you awkwardly place the plushie in the box next to the cat. Get up and turn to leave. A few steps away when you hear an electronic meow behind you. Huh? Oh, guess he didn't want it. Didn't see the plushie on the ground next to the box. Guess watching you closely, staring. I think we should leave. Grateful little monster. Half an annoyance. You're welcome. Shaking your head, she turned to leave once again. Son of a bitch. Can I just leave here in one piece, please? Ah. When a sharp pain lances up your arm. Yeah. Cry out and grab your arm only for it to... Oh great, I became the toy. Just what I always wanted. Fall off. Now it just falls right off. Stare and shock at your severed limb on the ground. Gathering your courage. Turn to look at where your arm had once connected to the rest of you. Only to see... Not blood, it's it's cotton. Touching it, the stump doesn't even hurt. That is till the same thing happens to your other arm. Ah, yeah. You fall both your legs succumb to the same nonsensical fate. Cry now at the agony it comes and goes as it, and like it never happened. As if you're not currently laying on the dirty ground of an alley. Limbless. What in the world is going on? Can't make sense of it. Can't think straight. Pain has receded. Knew you with a strangely empty pit in your stomach. Considering you still have a stomach and that wasn't replaced with. She lay back, helpless and still in shock, staring at the sky. Kaz's face appears in your line of vision. Oh. Again with the face munching. <laughs> Lunges at your torso and starts biting and clawing into your chest like it's your chew toy. Doesn't hurt anymore. You feel like it should. You're not sure if you're glad that it doesn't. Eventually you feel the cat pull something out of you. Small doll. Looks very, very familiar. It's hard to tell, but that doll is... That's you. Isn't it? Well, I mean, I don't know. I haven't really had a good chance to have a good look at me in the mirror, but... Cat hops off you and heads back to the box with a surprise. At least you think so. Everything's too dark to tell. Wake up and find out you can't move an inch. You can't look around. You can't even breathe. And none of these realizations seem to be a problem. All you can see is the familiar face of what, the face of a familiar looking cat curled around you, purring in its sleep. 
For some reason, this doesn't bother you. Not sure why you feel it should. Try to latch onto it. Thoughts in your head. They feel like memories of another life. Another time. Another you. The thoughts slip away like forgotten dreams. Oh well. That's fine, isn't it? We're just a doll, after all. A doll's role isn't to have silly thoughts to re or to remember unimportant things, but to be a companion. And judging from the cat's connected, p contented purring, seemed to be performing your role perfectly. You're filled with an overwhelming strong sense of pride at this fact. And so you too feel content. 1935, cotton headed. Well, that was uh, interesting. Yeah, you're the only friend it needs. Okay, this time let's try picking up the plushie. I hope that doesn't end, us, end up with us turning into a doll. So I can go over and pick up the stuffed toy. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> you really do just want attention, don't you? Pull out the cat door, examining it a little. Looks a little different. Oh. Definitely looking alright. Did it just look at you? Meow. You're gonna kill me, are ya? Meow. I don't fucking trust you. No. Oh, great. You got a creepy meow like that other cat. I'm gonna make good friends. Oh great, the fucking doll's gonna kill me now. Of course the fucking doll kills me. Plenty of someone opens its solemn mouth before biting into your wrist. Ow, stop. Try to fling it off, but its grip on you is strong as it drinks your blood. Ravenous and frantic. It is a weird fucking music. <laughs> Hit against the concrete walls of the alley. Try to tear at its sturdy fabric. But try as you might, you can't seem to hurt it or make it stop. It's just a toy after all. Eventually you start to feel faint. Not to collapse to your knees and feet. Stuffed doll is drinking more calmly now. As if its previous aggression had been a mere reaction to your desperation. So you satisfied that you're no longer putting up a fight. Then you blacked out for a second. Because though you're still seeing the next still seeing the next time you're conscious, eyes are closed. You feel so weak. All your strength just to well you have to use all your strength just to pry open your eyes and when you do. See a, see a kitten. The fur is similar orange cream with burnt sepia stripes. Lapping at your wrist. Ken lifts his head and looks up with your piercing pale green eyes. Mules at you with a high squeaky pitch. More cold in blood. Be downright adorable. If you weren't about to die from blood loss. Yeah, just face plant in front of it. I got black out and just a fall on top of it. <laughs> the cat rolls into your line of vision and picks up the kitten. Gives you an indecipherable look. Before turning away. Cat carries the kitten back to the box and starts to carefully and dutifully clean it. So when you find that you can't right yourself before falling to the ground. It would seem that, in the end, you would gotten the cat playmate after all. Living doll. Hmm. wonder if that was how this little guy was created. Or if it was something a lot more evil. Yeah, this one. You ended up getting the cat a nice companion. Not for us, though. Okay, there is this question mark. Hmm. 
I think I want to leave that one for last, but yeah, we're going to leave the cat first. Don't you think it's a good idea to get the cat, cat's hopes up of having someone look after it if you're not willing to commit? What if it gets attached and somehow tracks you down back to your home? Hmm. How do you get enough time to read that, but... Sorry, see you around, I guess. Stand up. The cat watching you every, every move. Make it halfway out of the alley when the cat meows almost pitifully at you. Okay, let's try turning back. I guess it'll just give us the same options, but... Oh, are you supposed to walk away from that? What kind of monster would you be if you could? So a little more back to the cat. I was hopeful. It's tail squishy faster as it leads up a little more towards you. So if you go for your next move. Huh, okay, we get a different option again, but let's stay, question mark? Strange. The more you hesitate to leave the alley, the more you find yourself wandering. What's the point? You'll go where? Do what? What's the point when you're already doing all of it completely and utterly alone? You going to your apartment wouldn't help, would it? One bedroom, one bathroom, one new living alone it. Been like that for so, so long. So long. Started when you feel an impossibly soft paw pressed lightly against your wet cheek. Didn't realize you'd been crying. Or that your little breakdown had literally brought you to your knees, right in front of the cat's box. Feel slightly embarrassed, but the cat responds as if it can sense your deprecating feelings and creeping in. <coughs> Presses port on your cheek three times in quick su succession, as if trying to slap you out of your melancholic state. But they're so light, so that's feel more like getting gently and eagerly petted. <laughs> Can't help but laugh a little. Can't believe I'm having a meltdown in a dirty old alley with a stray cat comforting me. Smile will show you gratitude with a little scratch on the, with a scratch on the cat's chin. Thanks, I'm fine really. This just happens sometimes. I really do like being alone most of the time. It's the only time I feel comfortable with being myself, you know. Even I get lonely every now and then. It's easy to ignore when I'm keeping myself busy. That's why I pushed myself to go out today, I think. Or <sighs> well, maybe I was hoping to make a friend or something. Though so I guess that wouldn't be a good idea. Doubt someone like me would make a very good friend to anyone. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe I won't go so far as to say that, but... I mean, the cat is one to speak, seeing as it's killed me in pretty much every single uh, run of this. You stay. Just talk to the cat about anything that comes to mind. Your isolation, your loneliness, many fears, your losses, your emptiness. Although, the longer you stay there, the smaller that one significant emptiness feels. It's been so long since someone just listened. Well, shift to gentler topics. Your hopes, dreams, happy memories of the past. As you talk, you don't even notice that once cold concretes the wall of the alley become flesh-like. Warm and pink. Softness slowly engulfing the both of, both of you. Sound in your own voice feels hypnotic as it reaches your ears, causing you to speak more of the depths of your heart into the open, given easily. When you do run out of words, not sure how long you've been sitting there. Not knowing doesn't seem to bother you. Still, so this question enters your mind. Leave and go home? Why would I want to do that? You're too tired to move. Pouring out your heart and soul has taken a surprising toll on you, but you have no regrets. You're so happy. Don't think you ever felt so heard, so seen. 
You'll need the forward to rest your head on the box. Don't so feel the rock cardboard you were expecting. So do you find yourself resting on a mass of something? Something soft and slightly damp and warm. So, so, so warm. But you can't find it in you to care what it could be. You're so tired. Close your eyes. You get the feeling that they'll probably never open again. But as that all-encompassing war cases you slowly, completely, feel nothing but pure contentment. Not alone. Oh, that was actually kind of a sweet ending. Huh. One that we didn't necessarily die in a brutal way. Kind of nice, actually, compared to all the other shit we've seen. Yeah, this one. Is it nice to be fuel heard? Absolutely. <laughs> It'd be a suck. We're well, definitely gonna suck trying to go through this world alone. You really can't afford to take the cat home with you. Well, maybe it wouldn't be completely impossible. We are extraneous luxury is cut here and there, and you can see as things are working out, sure. But there's a slight problem that's been making you waver this whole time. One you simply can't ignore. That problem being. And you just can't trust this cat. Sounds ridiculous even in your head. Cats don't require trust to care for. They're incapable of betraying and deception specifically because, like other animals, they only seek out for the most basic essentials of living, procreation, and comfort. Malice isn't something that could ever logically be applied to them. And yet, you feel it. That behind that gut-wrenching, adorable face, something dangerous and that something brought you here you, it called you here a curious person but even you can't shake the deep instinctual desire to get away from it cat's face looks blank it's an expression you've seen on many cats before but something about it feels sharper like it's aware of your thoughts and your intention to leave And it's down on you to try. Slowly stand up. Cat tracks your movements with its eyes, not bothering to move its head. You don't say a word. Try not to even think. Get away from it. Though you don't really succeed. Turn around and quickly leave the alley, feeling those sharp eyes on you the whole way. When you get a good distance away, you finally take in deep gulps of air. You feel better now. There's still plenty of time left to enjoy your day off. Oh, you forget everything that just happened. Uh, what to do? Oh, we actually get choices here now. Interesting. Okay, let's try watching a movie, I guess. Been a while since the film came out that looked interesting enough for you to for you to drag yourself to a movie theatre. There's a showing of one such film at an old theatre. It was a little too niche to be picked up by the new cinema that opened right across from the street. It's okay though, you're not exactly a fan of the crowds. Nothing ruins the experience of watching a new movie for you more than a noisy audience. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go to the old theatre, I guess. You can buy your ticket from the kind old man the booth and head inside. What the? How did you get back here? Get away from it. You leave the alley quickly. What now? Huh. Interesting. Okay, we skip through. Yeah, go to the new cinema this time. Why do you don't know why? But you don't really feel great about the idea of being alone right now. Deciding to wait for the movie you've been anticipating to be available on DVD or streaming, join the long line outside the new cinema. By the time you reach the ticket booth, you just want to get inside. Pick a movie at random and take your ticket from a tired looking teenager manning the booth. Head inside. And I'm fucking back here again. 
Yes, hi, we get it. Cat's face looks cute. Get away from it. What now? Okay, well, um, time to go to the carnival. Spend the day at the carnival. First wheel, roller coaster, Pharaoh booth, rides you've been on before. Hoots, coin toss, balloon darts, games you played before. Funnel cake, popcorn, cotton candy, who'd you been before? All things you've enjoyed before. Counted by groups of people all having fun together. Laughing, playing, eating, taking pictures, making memories. And that's you. Sun hasn't started to set yet. Still high in the sky, but it will soon. I to wonder if maybe you should just go home for the day. When you stop in your tracks. You see something new. An attraction you've never seen before. Maze of Funhouse Mirrors? Oh no. This is definitely a common trope in uh, horror movies that are set in, or have a carnival setting. Sounds kind of lame, honestly. Isn't it uh, even online to get in? Yeah, gee, I wonder why. <laughs> but then, what else is there to do? Oh, into the maze backwards. <laughs> Into the maze. Yes. Going in lines of the uh, error ending we got. Oh, great! You're back again! And you're looking even crazier! Fucking great. Cat's face looks. Get away from it. Leave the alley quickly. What now? Go to the dog park. Decide to take a stroll in a park or something. Only way, only one within your walking distance for the day is the nearby dog park. You think it'll make you feel better? I mean, we definitely had enough uh, of cats for one day. First, you get to see a cute cat today, and now you get to see some cute, see a cute dog. Several of them, in fact. Okay, they look kind of weird with this monochrome thing across it. Park is bustling with owners and their canine companies. Playing frisbee, f fetch, running, jumping, even napping. Uh, oh, because I would discuss here. They should. You decide to move on. Dogs are all so adorable. The uh, fuck is up with the music? <laughs> Want to pair every single one you come across. I mean, no, not all owners are cool with strangers just walking up and manhandling the pets. Not all dogs are pretty sated either. If you stroll around the path trying to execute. Yeah, that word. Welcome your aura that will beckon one of these cute doggies to you. Don't have to wait very long. Oh, hi, puppy. Although you look very, very high. <laughs> Stop at the smallest, cutest puppy you've ever seen it scampers up to you, blocking your path. Puppy! Pick up the puppy and... Ah, uh, yes, hi again. Like, I don't want to fucking deal with you. Deal with it. <laughs> like, get the fucking hint already. I want to leave and go away from... What a creep fest this is. Cat's face looks... It's... Get away from it. Oh great, the fucking doll's back now. <laughs> Leave the alley quickly. But I have nothing else to do now, so... Yeah, go home. Wait, haven't you done this before? I mean, yeah, several fucking times, but... It never worked out for me. I feel sick. Looking around, you suddenly realise that, unlike earlier, there's no single person in sight. You're alone. You're completely alone. I'm assuming it's the cat's doing. Why do you feel like you're being watched right now? Feel your heartbeat start to race. You need to get home. Now. Walk back home. The feeling of our eyes on or well, the feeling of eyes on your back getting worse with each step. By the time you're fumbling with the keys at your drawer, you're soaked through with cold sweat. 
The skin prickles and itches. Who gave you feel might as well be eyeballs physically pressing into your flesh. Sticky and unnatural. Finally get inside and <laughs> Weight of relief and a sigh that escapes through your lips actually causes you to physically shudder. Her old feeling from Ellie immediately dis dissipates as if it were never there. In the wake of his departure, you left shaken and cold in your sweatsuit clothes. You're too relieved to care. Exhausted and young, you mentally pass on the very constant eating and head straight for your bedroom. Open the door and turn. Ah, oh, fuck's sake! Leave me alone! Not again. No. No. Back up in fear. Eyes trained on the cat and its horrifying grin. New to escape. You need to get out. Even home isn't safe anymore. Where will you go? Risk a glance around you and. See that the walls around all around you have been fleshy and lined with sharp teeth. The ground now a tongue rising under your feet. However, you realize that the alley's entrance is getting smaller and smaller, closing like a mouth. Try to run for the exit. Squish. <laughs> Nowhere to hide. Trying to run on the tongue slows your speed significantly as you stumble and trip. No. You watch helplessly as the last of a light from the entrance tightens beyond the sides you could never hope to squeeze through. As darkness falls over you, you feel the damp humidity of the mouth all around you. Walls, walls of teeth, fangs, take their time closing in, closer and closer, and... Ending 23, Feedback Loop. Ah, that one was an interesting ending. Yeah, this one. Try to leave the alley, it doesn't work. Try to leave the alley, it doesn't work. Try to leave the alley, and it doesn't work. Hmm. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna have to restart this route because I. Because I, originally I had gone for. Uh, was. Ah, oh, damn it, I didn't mean to save it with that, but hold on. Because I had originally gone for a uh, turn back and then leave, but I clicked on ignore instead and it changed slightly. Hey, no, no, we need to nip this. In the bun, go on with your day. So what's best for both of you? <laughs> Leave the alley and continue on your way. Wait, what am I doing? What are you excited about dealing with your fury, fury dilemma? If you wonder, you still hadn't decided what you were going to do for the day off. Okay, so then we went and go watch a movie. Then, yeah. One at the old theatre. Then there's also one at the new theatre. So we go to the old theatre. Eagerly buy a ticket from the kind old man both and head inside. It's barren of any trace of other people and the curl looks like it hasn't changed since the 80s. Maybe in the 70s. But it's what you were counting on. Consider buying some popcorn. But you can't help but be concerned that everything at the concession stand might be expired. You want to walk through the halls, finally locating the theatre designed on your ticket stub. As expected, the theatre you, your movie will be playing in is completely empty. Perfect! You pick a spot right in the middle, even counting seats and taking into consideration the gap of the staircase. Sill and lights dim fade away, leaving the room pitch black for a few seconds. Before the screen flickers on, no commercial trailers pop up. Maybe it just begins. Please you shrug and let yourself get immersed in the opening scene. But just as you're getting into the premise... Doors open behind you, momentarily casting light into a room and ruining the atmosphere. Hold it in a frustrated sigh. It's a public establishment after all. 
But I can, can't exactly afford to stay open if you're the only customer. Try to refocus on the moon, but you sense the new presence slowly shifting around the theater. We're heading in your general direction. What? Oh hi, it's an actual person. Okay. You gape in utter disbelief at the stranger shovels down the aisle and sit right in front of you. No one else here, plenty of places to sit. The stranger is also unusually tall. Even the steam like arrangement of the seat has been on a somewhat steep incline. They're completely blocking your view. Okay, let's try moving to another spot. Don't want to risk escalating the situation further. This whole thing is already making you uneasy. Why would they choose to sit right in front of you? Surely they know you wouldn't be able to see past them. Shaking your head with a passive aggressive scoff in the stranger's direction, you reluctantly pick another less perfect seat in the theatre. But, as you settle down, see the stranger person get up. Or strange person get up. Maybe to want to sit down in the seat directly in front of you. The ground is somewhat helpless here, with waiting for someone to suddenly agree with you about how old all of this is. Well, let's inform you that it's all an elaborate prank. There's no one else here with you. That's how you always liked it. But, can't help but think that maybe it would be nice to have someone else here if it meant not being out alone this weird, with this weird jerk. Okay, let's try moving to another spot. Move, again. And again, they sit in front of you. You bristle annoyed with a, and a little humiliated. Are they just getting a kick out of this or something? You've wasted enough time with this jerk that you don't even know what's going on in the movie anymore. Okay, well let's try confronting them. Hey, confrontation, you can already feel your palms starting to sweat the idea of it. Throws closing up and your body starts to shake. Always been a more of a flatter than a flatter. But you paid for this ticket. You wanted to watch this movie for ages. Now this two stranger has ruined the entire experience for you. All alone in this theatre, there's no one who will help you if something goes wrong. But you're angry enough that you ignore the signs of your body begging you to put as much distance as you can between yourself and this stranger. Stand up. You're standing higher up on the incline. The stranger is still at least a head taller than you. Maybe it continues to play in the background, but you feel as if a hush immediately falls heavily over the theatre at your movement. As if you can sense the stranger anticipating what you plan to do next. Scree shoulders and force a little bass into your voice. Hey! If it makes your words come out more harshly than you intended, like a sudden vicious bark. But you figure they deserve it anyway. A real jerk, you know. You know that? Just what are you playing at, huh? You trying to piss me off? Charles that follows your words is deafening. So, so much so that you glance at the screen only to find that the movie has paused? Attention is ripped back to the stranger in front of you as they shift slightly. Like a small animal trying desperately to anticipate the moves of a predator. You don't move an inch. You don't look away. Don't dare to blink. Stare at your eyes blind as the person's head turns. And turns some more. And turns more. Beyond what should be possible. Neck bones cracking. To face you directly. Huh. You can't move. Why did glowing eyes resting above a wider grinning mouth gaze down at you? Stranger opens their mouth and what comes out? Something impossible to comprehend. Okay, this is kind of weird. Voice is endlessly deep and creaks like a weedy door, birdie and oddly melodic. Blurring, but also snaps you out of your terrifying trance. Before you know it, you've, you're already out the door. You run through the halls of the empty theatre, heading for the exit. You feel something watching you from behind, but you're too afraid to look. 
Exit is now in sight. Sprint forward and bursting through the doors. You look around frank frantically and spot the crowd of cinema across the street. People, that's what you need. Safety numbers and all that. Now thinking you rush into the street with a sinking sensation crawls down your spine, compelling you to look behind you. Oh. Don't look behind you. Despite your resistance, you feel your head turning to look back at of its own accord. On the middle of the street? Ah, for fuck's sake! Is this your owner? Makes sense. Hey, I'm guessing you're the one that left the damn creepy cat around. Patrick glimpsed of a grotesque looking person standing behind the glass door of the old theatre, watching you intensely, cradling something in their arms. Something familiar. But. Ow, my fucking ears. Oh, Jesus fucking cry. Huh. Okay, well, I got killed by a freaking truck. Guys, is all you get. The truck speeds forward and crashes into your body. Well, I'm definitely a pancake now. Killed on impact, and your body splattered across the road and crushed further under the heavy tires. What screening arrangements? Okay, well that was that ending. Okay, so for whatever reason, the ignore option is completely separate to the um, other one we did. Yeah, this one. Go to your theater and enjoy a film with an interesting stranger. Yeah, compared to this feedback loop, huh, which is weird. So I may have missed some with the others then maybe I don't know but we still got and we're up to 31 endings found we're nearing the end there this is too weird feeling uncomfortable you decide to leave the theater there's still enough time left in the day to do something else okay so yeah we can do that but yeah, let's try going to the new cinema now. Don't know why, but you really don't feel great about the idea of being alone right now. Trying to wait for the movies. You've been anticipating to be available on DVD or streaming. Join the long line outside the new cinema. But by the time you reach the ticket booth, you just want to get inside. So you pick a movie at random and take your seat from, well, yeah, the usual stuff that we read through before. Because she can sleep. The inside is bustling with people. It's not what, what you're usually into. But it's kind of nice not being alone. Even if you feel a little lonely watching families and groups of friends laughing among yourselves. Get some popcorn, but the lines at the concession stands are long and the prices are criminal anyway. Go through the halls. Follow the signs to the theatre designated to your ticket before heading inside. <sighs> inside the side of the abs absolutely crowded theatre, head towards a seat only to be told by the one by the person next to it that has been saved for somebody. It happens a few more times before you finally manage to get yourself settled into a seat knowingly off center to the screen. But the screen is at least visible, if not a little too close. So you grit your teeth and bear it. Light fades out. The chatter doesn't. The rest of you don't seem content to talk through the commercials and even through the trailers. Picking the chat will start when the movie actually begins. But doesn't even slightly quiet. Doesn't get even slightly quieter as the opening scene starts to play out. So out loud, not think anyone would hear you anyway. So why you avoid movie theaters like the plague? Uh, no. Why are you here? Suddenly the screen changes to showing the face of a black cat. A familiar black cat. Confused murmurs fill the room, but then the cat on the screen meows. Oh my god, that sounds so fucking creepy. 
Sounding strange, not at all like any captured sound. Haunting, was melodic. And later, it made of multiple voices all different, of all different creatures. Creatures that would probably never say. Same computer and wondering why you haven't already gone up and left a complaint to the cinema staff. But then you hear it. Scattered this is nut at first, but among the crowd people start to chant along with the count and scream. So fucking creepy. In the entire room is chanting in perfect unison. Everyone is staring intently at the countless screen. Feeling strangely drawn to your screen yourself. Pulsion to stare blankly like the other people isn't that strong. For now. Also, you start to notice out of the corner of your eye that some of the people in your immediate vicinity are looking at you. No. That was staring holes into you, even as they continue chanting. You don't miss a beat as they slowly begin to frown at you in plain disapproval. It scowls deeper as time goes on if they're getting patient. Uh, let's try blending into the crowd. <laughs> sure. Think if I should look at the screen and begin to chant tandem with the crowd. Yeah, I'm not gonna try and fucking say that. Feel the harshness of their collected gaze start to ebb away. The air in the theatre becoming lighter once again. You release there shakily, just realising that you'd been holding your breath earlier. Feel stuck. Surely you can't just up and leave now. After whatever that was, people around you all seem fine now. But there's no telling if they'd get aggressive if we're even moving too much. No mind outright getting up and leaving. So I'd let this run its course. Hopefully some will come along, right? Or well, at least turn the film off. Continue to chat along with everyone. Start to feel lightheaded. Feel as if you could fall asleep, but your eyes don't feel heavy in the slightest. Try to look around and gauge the other's emotional state. Again, with the weird music tracks. <laughs> but you can't seem to look away from the screen. Try again, but you're locked into eye contact with the cat on screen. <laughs> You tend to physically force your line of vision away. Still your nerves are ready to throw yourself to the ground if you need to, but your body only gets as far as tensing out for a moment before completely loosening itself again. Then you can lay back limply into your seat. I think you should be panicking right about now. But even your brain feels limp. Thoughts are vaguely muted pastel pink. Airy. Secondly sweet and loosely spun. Like cotton candy. You like cotton candy. You think you should, um, shouldn't mind your thoughts and body being like cotton candy either. So, why get up and ruin that? Mercy. What appears then you ever felt before in such a crowded room? Feel chanting you've never felt so aligned and in tune with another person. Let alone an entire room of room full of complete strangers. You're not no alone. Out of the corner of your eye, the person next to you starts to sink back even further into their chair. And sink more. Then more. Not that they're slashing and reclining, it's more like they're... Ew. Deflating. 
skin bunches up and wrinkles like fabric as if their muscles, their bones have started to disintegrate. Eyes dim before sinking into their sockets. Mouth still attending to chant falls over a cut off neck. Gaping the word ending in a awful hiss. Final weak release of the air. Muse thoughtfully about whether or not you should be distressed at the sight. But even then, the blank of peace doesn't leave you. So we from the pale skin that plays next to you, see a lump moving around. Watching Dave's fascination as the lump makes its way to the part of the skin where the head used to be. Now, from the mouth, there's that fucking cat again. It's so gross. Hear the familiar hissing sound all around you now as the unified chants start to fade. And to be replaced with a faint mewing of kittens. Oh great, we're gonna have uh, another wall of cats again. One of your voices, the only one still chanting, still human and alone again. Don't want that. Can't go back to that. Not again. Not again. Please. Just then you go completely lump. But if it was light, and, but, it, but it might as well weigh several tons. You realize quite suddenly that you can't move. Not an inch. You can't shift your eyes to look around. Can't even breathe. But somehow, chant continues to creak weakly from your mouth. Three kids come towards and push themselves on the chairs around you, watching your sinking body. The only thing is they wait for the youngest sibling to emerge from you. Dozens of glowing eyes peer down at you. As your eyes start to cave into the sockets of your softening skull, you manage to make out the silhouette of a familiar cat, perching on the seat right in front of you. Vision finally fades, and as that same hiss of air expels itself from your mouth, Nothing you sense is something small and alive shifting eagerly under your skin. Happy birthday! God, that was a fucking weird one. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that was a that was probably the weirdest one that we've gotten so far. Definitely on some sort of acid trip on that one. Yeah, this one. Have a front row seat to the touching reunion of multiple siblings in the new cinema. Okay, I want to try seeing what happens if I try to leave the theatre for this. It's too weird, I need to get out of here. Gathering your courage, or perhaps putting your fear to use, you stand up, fully intending to leave the theatre. And everything comes to an abrupt stop. All the chanting stops, even the cats chanting on the screen. Tense and risk a glance around the theatre. They're all staring at you. Every single one of them. Not moving and not even blinking. Swallow throat suddenly dry, even though a nervous sweat completely soaks through your clothes. Highly doubt that sitting back down will fix the situation. Legs are shaking under the audience's unnaturally intense scrutiny, but you force yourself to step forward and forward and forward until you reach the end of the aisle. Feel the collective gaze even worse on the staircase. All the heads have turned uncomfortably to the left to look directly at you. The screen illuminates their faces, making clear their blank scowls. Seeming more upset that they had been minutes ago, identical frowns lines digging between their brows. Keep going. The heavy atmosphere becoming more and more oppressive with each step. So tense that with anticipation that you fully expect someone to grab you at you from behind. But no one does. Don't hear any of them get up. Exit the theatre, hold your breath as the doors close behind you. Briskly you walk through the halls, putting as much distance as possible between you and that theatre of people. Finally reaching the lobby, you can barely manage to catch yourself from falling into the floor as you gulp in huge gasps of air. You to feel relief at as your breathing calms, but you feel a lingering sense of dread that only spikes once you finally notice it. As well as its source, you look up. 
Your stomach sinks. All the people in the lobby are area of the movie theater. They're running in line at the concession stand. All of them are staring at you. And they look even angrier than the people in the theater. Don't hesitate this time. Duck your head, avoid any eye contact, and leave the, th the cinema. Ignore the glares of everyone in the ticket booth and the lines leading to them. You make your way home. Whenever you dare to look up at someone on the way, flash out the blatant anger, fear, and disgust on their face. You think you start to hear the faint sound of the cats meowing behind you, or maybe a kitten's. Doesn't matter, you just want to go home. You reach your front door and fumble with the keys. Carrying from the look of pure hatred on your neighbor's face as he stares at you from his door. Finally you get inside your apartment. Lock all, lock all the locks on your door and then slide, slide down with your back against it until you're sitting on the floor. You allow yourself to breathe for a moment. Now home, your heart calms and your fear slowly bleeds from you, leaving you feeling strangely empty. Pass the kitchen, head to your room and sleep under the covers or your bed, trying to fall asleep. Maybe it's all just a bad dream. As you fall into a fit full of sleep, sure to be full of nightmares of glaring eyes, Try to ignore the ever-increasing sounds of cat meowing and yelling in the distance outside your apartment. Black sheep. Man, that was... <clears throat> yeah, that was a definitely a tough ending. Yeah, this one. When a big fan of the movie in the new cinema, the rest of the audience might have opinions about that. Yeah, and certainly one where we didn't actually die. Hmm. But we're going through that ending. Um, hmm. It makes me think, like, is, our main character here obviously has some form of, like, social anxiety or something like that. Yeah, I've noticed with, like, a lot of these, they're, like, um, oh, what's the word for it? Like, not really an allegory or whatever, but just a lot of these have, um, our main character been terrified of something watching them. And people like worried about about what people think about them and whatnot. Maybe it's paranoia. I'm not really sure, but hmm, makes you think. Anyway, we still got a few more endings to find. Okay, well we do on to both the movie things, so let's go to the carnival. New day at the carnival. First of all, roller coaster for a boat. I have been on before? Okay, well, yeah, we've already done all this before. So, yeah, and then we get to the mirror maze, yeah. Yeah, what else is to do? Yeah, let's enter the maze. Because we didn't get to go in here, really, last time. Into the maze. He runes in and he knows that the mirrors aren't all weird. Just, some just show you looking back at yourself. A little bored, a lot tired, and so very, very... Hmm. Maybe this was a mistake. Why did, did you think this was going to be... A, going into Maze of Mirrors was a good idea? Maybe it was something new to experience. Okay. We can't do this today. Ah. Uh, Probably also experiencing dysmorphia or sorts, maybe? Or just not really liking the how your body looks. Turn around to head back the way you came. I need to bump into a mirror. Ah, oh, what the? Where's the exit? Try again only to find a mirror blocking your way. This time you turned all around, you realize that the way you came is completely gone. 
Okay, don't panic. I just have to keep going forward, right? Step through the only opening you can find. Nearly trip over Sonic on the ground. Bend down to pick it up. What's this doing here? In your hand rests a worn looking flashlight. Curious you flick it on. Huh. Light doesn't look very... Crap, the lights. Power go well, did the attraction operator forget you in here? How long have you been in here, actually? Pull your phone to check the time or maybe call the police. Your phone is dead. Of course it is. Grab the flashlight in your hand. Lies emanated earlier was dim enough for you to know there was, there was probably not that much juice left. Best to reserve it for a worst case scenario and feel your way out. Yeah, yeah, you can do this. Just take a calming breath. Well, where would we go? Hello, adventurer. The Vulcans in the mirror maze. Would you like to know how to navigate the maze? Ah, uh, yes, I need some help. Once again, welcome to the mirror maze. You're in a bit of a jam, but don't worry, you're in good hands. Or rather, good paws. See these cute little... See these little cuties here? They're going to do their best to guide you through the maze. Aren't they gorgeous? When you enter the room, they imagine light will flash. Then you see the past before you a second. And also what lies beyond them. Whenever you see these kind kitties, just go where they are and you'll reach the next room. Unfortunately, they're not the only things in here. It is highly suggested that you refrain from following any of our other guests. They can be sneaky or distracting, but they're always hostile. So please take caution when advancing to the next room. Of course, this wouldn't be much of a mirror maze without mirrors. Can they hurt you? No, they're just mirrors, silly. They don't do anything at all. And you can't do anything to them either. They're just an obstacle you can't pass through. Go left, go center, or go right. The choice is yours. Though, find a room with no helpful kitties in sight, and all the other paths lead to a mirror or something else. It's recommended that you stay put, or just maybe it will work itself out. Now for your navigation tools. Flashlight you found doesn't have much juice left. So it will only let you get a quick extra peek at your surroundings about five times. So try not to use it all up at once. You can keep track of your progress with the rooms up in the left corner. And your lives are up on the right. We got three lives, so be careful to avoid the less friendly guests lurking around. Why only three lives, you ask? Because you're soft and squishy. It wouldn't take much to damage your bond repair. And besides, you're human. You humans usually only have one life, yes. And yet, you get three. Don't you think you ought to show a little more gratitude? And that's the end of the tutorial. Helpful. Hopefully it was helpful. Are you ready to play? Um... <laughs> this game is going to be way too easy. Game is too hard. <laughs> yeah, can you let me go? Quest to forfeit is denied. Let me out of here. Screw is not allowed in the maze. Okay, well, can you turn off the flash, please? Of course. Flash off. Okay, well, let's turn it back on, because I want it on. Can you tell me... Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, this game is too hard. Oh, all right. Flash off will give you seven seconds. Seven second chances now. And the flash will last longer. That better? Oh, well, thank you. Okay, I guess I'm ready to play. Oh my god, this is going to be a fucking nightmare, but... Okay, three, two, one, go! Okay, we want to 
go to the right, because the other two looked, um, kind of evil. Okay, next room. Okay, to the right again. Okay, next room. Okay, to the left. I better quickly think there, because, yeah, I'm directionally challenged. Oh, um, yeah, we're staying put. Room feels off. Just wait. I think something just changed. Oh, what the fuck is that on the right? Okay, yeah, now we're going left. Thank you. Okay, next room. Oh, what the fuck are these things? <laughs> Go away. Oh, yeah. They're... Okay, we need to stay put because uh, we literally cannot go anywhere. I think something just changed. Where are we going? Okay, Santa Kitty. Wondering what happens if we end up dying. Well, I'll probably find out when I whenever I go from the next one here. Okay, next room. Okay, to the right. Now to the right again. To the right again. Oh, okay, we actually got a nice one this time. We're going to the center. Uh, center again. Uh, we need to stay put because we literally cannot go anywhere. Unless we want to fucking knock ourselves out in the mirrors. Okay, go to the left. Okay, go to the center. Now, how long is this going to go on for? Okay, right. Okay, next room. Okay, center. Okay, oh, I did realize that the rooms are up on the top. But, I mean, they did just say that on the tutorial, so nearly there. Okay, center. Uh, center again. To the left. And to the left again. And last room we need... Oh, fuck, I didn't mean to click on that. No, not that way. I was supposed to click... Just wait, yeah. I think something just changed. See it, the exit. One forward, but as you do. Scenery, uh, Scenery your shifts, but slightly at first. Are well, you running too fast to stop yourself from climbing into the glass? Except, you don't quite go into the glass. I don't think they can collide with it either. Simply pass through it. And on the other side, you see an endless white void and. Oh, glitchy people. Oh, glitchy me's. Yourself. Dozens of you. Hundreds of you wandering around. Aimless. Faceless. And empty. It's empty and listless. They don't even acknowledge your presence. Try to turn back. But the glass doesn't give. Pass the glass. Oh, it's that damn fucking cat again. Million cat black black cat walks up and looks at you. Think it meows at you. But you can't make out the sound. Tilts his head. And then walks away. Oh, I guess I'm trapped in here with the other me's. Guessing they're all alternate me's from all the different runs we've been doing. Glass goes dark. I'm not sure the, all of them are the ones that also got as lost as me. And I'm not talking about just the maze, just in life in general. And you watch helplessly as it disappears completely. Trapped. Only yourself as company. You beat the maze, smiley face. <laughs> but at what cost? Okay, I'm gonna purposely try to lose this time. Just wanna see if this will give me a different ending or not. Suddenly, lights turn on. Eyes burn from the sudden brightness. As your vision adjusts, you see that you're completely surrounded by mirrors. Actually, all grotesque in unique ways. Look nothing like you. But they do look hungry. 
back up. I don't know where to go. Was there even a way out to begin with? Maybe we did, but uh, at the same time, not really. Bump back into a mirror. Uh, feel a hand firmly gri grip your shoulder. Numb. Sharp pain in your other shoulder. You rip away looking back at to see something leaning out of the mirror. His face has no features, save for a large gaping mouth, stained in your blood. Looking around in a panic, you think that the mirror is feel closer than before. The path you come in is in from long gone. Surrounded and every time you blink, you can swear the mirrors are getting closer and closer and closer. Horrifying reflections looking hungrier and hungrier and hungry. Failed me! Okay, well, we get, at least got that ending. Yeah, we've only got five more endings to go. Yeah, where is it? Yeah, there's one for we beat the maze. Then yeah, we failed the maze. <laughs> Better luck next time. Okay, time to go to the dog park this time. Time to take a stroll on a park or something. The only one within a walking distance is the nearby dog park. You think it'll make you feel better. First you go to see a cute cat today, now you get to see a cute dog. Several of them, in fact. Hopefully we'll actually be allowed to see one this time without it dog being high on whatever mushroom he found in the forest, or the park, and the cat interrupting us. <laughs> park is bustling with owners and their canine companions. Okay, yep, we've already... yeah, whatever. Like you'd want to do anything with these mangy mutts. What's wrong? I don't think that. Decide to move on. Dogs are also adorable. You want to pet every single one you came across. But you know, not all owners are cool with strangers just yeah, doing that. No dogs appreciate it either. You stroll along, and we have a dog that comes up to us. Oh, look at him! He's so cute and doesn't look like he has been eating the wrong stuff. <laughs> Stop at the smallest, cutest puppy you've ever seen. Scampers up to you, blocking your path. What the fuck are these kinds of fucking options? Mm. Uh, I guess we gotta go through all these, because I'm guessing these are probably a rainy few. Okay, hold on. What happens if we leave the park? Yes, leave. Leave dogs. Now what? Okay, well, um... That doesn't give us an ending, so... God, like most of these are fucking horrible. <laughs> okay, let's get the horrible ones out of the way first. What? It's just a puppy. Nobody would ever do that. Oh, thank fucking Christ, kids. Oh my god. Felt like it was gonna be that um one indie game that I played for the uh, Palestine bundle thing. Ugh. I'm still, still traumatized from that, so let's eat it. That's disgusting. I think I'm gonna be sick. No way I could ever do that. I mean, there's some places that think dogs and cats are delicacy, but uh, please, for love of God, do not do this option. No, that's horrible. No way I'd ever do that. Okay, thank you for <laughs> doing that. Okay, let's pick him up. Pick up the puppy and hold on. Just barely managed to rein in the reflexes to throw Poppy as far away as you from you as possible. Shaking hands, you quickly place the puppy on the grass and take several jerky steps away. Then it seems confused by your reaction to their puppy. But you just wave at them in a daze before hastily stumbling away. Okay, why is everything ugh, so loud and weird now? Not feeling so great after being at the park at the moment. Maybe you should leave. Ah, uh, well, leaving the park probably won't do anything, so let's stay. 
Stay at the park. Try to calm down by watching other dogs from afar as you walk along the path. Real so often one will run up to you. you will look how cute and trippy these guys are. When they do, they look wrong. They just don't seem to notice. Find a bench and sit down for a quick break, closing your eyes. Maybe this wasn't the best idea after all. Maybe... You should have stayed with me instead. Breaking out of your thoughts when something lands gently on your lap. Look down and see a frisbee at your thighs. Hey, sorry about that. Can you throw it back? Look up to see the owner waving at you in the distance. But more importantly... Doggo! Hello, puppy! Oh, look at him. Series of excited barks directs your gaze forward as you see the large dog sprinting towards you. Are you gonna chomp my legs off? I get a feeling you're gonna... Yeah, you're gonna fucking kill me, of course. Fucking course. <laughs> Son of a bitch, I can't fucking escape this ship. <laughs> it's not a cat, it's a fucking dog now. As soon as I'm excited, Box jerks your gaze forward and you see a large dog sprinting towards you. Hey, hurry, throw it back. Oh, he's definitely looking a lot more fucking evil. Oh, uh... Throw! Throw the frisbee and the dog runs in the opposite direction. Jumping and catching it right out of the air. Impressive. Dog and the only walk up to you. Thanks for that. You can pet him if you want. Eh, uh, nah, I'm good. Dog looks up you. Eager for his reward and pets and pats for catching the frisbee. Should I? <laughs> like how it's petting and everything else is leave. Okay, let's pet the doggo. What could possibly go wrong? Really? Are you sure? I'm warning you. Ah, of course, it's a fucking warning. Do not touch the mutt, or you will regret it. Well, I've fucking regretted doing every single one of these other endings, so why not this one too? Okay, what brutal way are you going to fucking kill me now? Reach your hand out. And you pet the dog. Dog seems pleased. Don't feel well. Suddenly, Monch Sky begins to darken rapidly. You look up along with all the pet owners to see that the sun has been eclipsed by the moon in the blink of an eye. Vaguely remember that you should never look directly at an eclipse, but for some reason you don't look away. Uh oh. A loud piercing yowl fills the air, shaking the ground beneath you. Secretly move to lift your hands in order to shield your eyes. But. The hand that had been cautiously pressed upon the dog's head comes away with some resistance. Resistance is like st sticky slime, almost cementing your hand to the dog's head. Sign stretches with, with your movement. Dog's head stretches with it too, as the canine begins to just melt. It melts and melts. Until it becomes a pile of goo at your feet. Uh, you desperately look around for the dog's owner. Only really find an empty pile of familiar clothes where they once stood. See so similar piles of clothes next to piles of goo scattered all across the parts of the field. All the dogs, all their owners. The other goo of the dog in front of you then starts to move with a shudder. This is going to be gross. Slowly across the grass towards the field in the center of the park. All the other piles of goo following after it. They mix and melt together into a single entity that shifts and undulates and bulges and grows. Watch in dazed horror as it then fills and shapes itself. Well, it makes it one giant dog, yeah, into a behemoth of a dog, snarling and frothing at the mouth, red eyes frantic and searching. Before the glowing orb lands directly in front of you. 
Rumbling growl it emits is so low and deep you can feel the sound of it crush into you. Leave the park? No. You had your chance. Better start running. Well, fuck. <laughs> Try to run. But you're not fast enough. Behemoth barely takes a few leaps before it's already towering over you. Ow. Ow. Again. Ow. You done? Tears you apart until there's nothing left. A dog person! Yay! Okay, that was a freaking weird one. Yeah, here we go. At least we got the cute little picture there for it. Yeah, pleasant day we're at the dog park.